Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Classic Restos. Of course not possible without the continued support from Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oils. Classic vehicle insurance is made easy with Shannon's and why? It's simple, they are the best in the business. If you go to Shannon's website, shannons.com.au, it's very comprehensive and you can be there quite a while. Have a look through the website and see what they can offer you. If you add your home insurance to your current car or bike insurance, you'll receive a 10% multi-policy discount. That's just one thing, but there on the website, you can also sign up and become a member of the Shannon's Club. Classic Restos is very proud to have Penrite Oil as a major sponsor of the TV show. There are many reasons why it's so good to have Penrite on board. First of all, they've been established since 1926. They're an Australian-owned company and a family-run business. Whether you're running a 186 Holden engine through to a trusty 318 like in this CM Chrysler, Penrite has an oil to suit your application. Now, if you're not too sure about what type of grade of oil you should be using in your engine, get in touch with the Penrite Tech Team. They're available through penriteoil.com.au If you're lucky enough to have a classic American built GM or Ford, chances are that National Parts Depot will have the part to suit your restoration. You can get in contact with NPD for a comprehensive catalogue and boy, when you see it, you'll be blown away. There's literally hours of reading through every catalogue. When you get a moment, get in touch with National Parts Depot. They freight to Australia and New Zealand every day of the week. Find out more at npdlink.com. And on today's show, I have travelled to the beautiful Warrnambool, Victoria. Australia. Now if you like your Chryslers or just have a general appreciation for these classic cars, well this is it. The 13th Chrysler National Rally. This Chrysler event is put on by the Chrysler Restorers Club of Australia. Everyone has been here almost a week in beautiful Warrnambool, Victoria. The Chrysler Rally caters to the company of friends, old and new, all of whom share a common interest in Chrysler built vehicles. Warrnambool and the Shipwreck Coast was chosen for its unique mix of history and natural beauty. Its regional town architecture, separated by wide streets, give the perfect Australian country feel and hosts a record number of entrants and vehicles. These rallies, like most, are often held biannually and some are even further spaced than that due to the massive amount of work and planning. In 2014, this particular Chrysler Rally will be taking place in New South Wales. Warrnambool is a regional centre and former port city on the southwestern coast of Victoria. It's home to almost 40,000 people and Warrnambool marks the western end of the Great Ocean Road. Warrnambool was declared a town in 1883 and a city in 1918 and like most other regional towns scattered throughout Victoria, it's a delightful place and will always be a favourite destination to drive to and explore. And our first lucky customer on today's show, Grantley Bland. How are you, Grantley? Very well, Fletch. That's good, mate. That's good. I have to thank you. Thank you for the invitation, the opportunity for Classic Restos to come here and cover your event for the first time. Yes, it's a pleasure, Fletch. Uh, I've watched your show quite a number of times and I thought uh, I came up with the idea in fact and said well let's see if Fletch wants to come and join us. Grantley just quickly tell us about the rally for 2013. Well it was organised by the Victorian Club, uh, we chose Warrnambool and uh, participants from South Australia, New South Wales and Victoria pretty well equally uh, participants, equal numbers rather. Yep. Yep. It's just a great ride up, I mean how many cars have we got? There was 170 entrants, a few unfortunately have had to pull out, but man, maybe 160 at the finish. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great, and you've been here all week? We've been here all week, yes. Uh, Warrnambool didn't actually uh, turn on the good weather to start with, but as you can see, it's turned out magnificently today. But the bottle shops, they would have been doing well. Yeah, they've done extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Grantly, now you've got a sensational 36 uh, coupe utility here at Dodge. Uh, this is a beautiful vehicle. What's the run down here? Well, I bought it in 1986. Uh, had a, 
a cosmetic restoration when I first bought it, and uh, well, it's just come out of a body shop six months ago. So, and uh, not not body off, but we've had the uh, just had the motor rebuilt actually. How was it when you found it? Uh, it was in original condition with some paint flaking off it, but it was drivable. History of the vehicle? Did you know who owned it before you? No, I bought it from a bloke named David Blake in uh, Castle Maine who had it for 10 years and he took it as a trade-in from the original owner. Wow. Yeah. Oh, how sensational is that? Grantley, thank you once again for having me here and showcasing your vehicle on today's show. I really appreciate it and really nice meeting up with you guys. My pleasure, Fletch. Thank you. Welcome. Time for Glenn now. How are you, Glenn? Oh, I'm great, Fletch. Yourself? Oh, great, mate. Great. Look at this. We've got a 1962, an S-Series Valiant. What an incredible car they were. An interesting time in the early 60s. They were so space age. They were. They were. They were straight out of America. Um, of course, they were brought out here to fill a gap in the Chrysler production until the Australian production cars got up and running. Um, the, of the first ones to come out were the R model and they sold them that quickly that they then brought out 10,000 odd of these uh, and they sold those before the uh, AP5s actually got up and running. So I think with the R series it was 1,008 I think for memory? Something like that, yeah, yeah. Just, there, just over 1,000 and I think there was about 1,026 yeah. or 27 of these. So uh, You know, they were so far ahead of themselves these cars that it took a while for the Australian market to really kick on. I mean, they still was in support of the uh, EK Holden, which was the last of the high bonnet, 50 styling, a 138 grey engine, 13-inch wheels. Here we had a car, 14-inch wheels, 145 horsepower, 225 cubic inch slant six. They could do Holden's top speed held in second gear. And Chrysler could still get no any Holden sales. No, 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 no. I, um, I think it was, uh, yeah, the, obviously the perception of the Australian made car and uh, once the AP5s and AP6s got going they, they made a bit of a dent into the Holden and Falcon uh, world but they were always the, uh, the always the, the, the third one on the list they weren't uh, but they're a great car it's a, it's a wonderful car to drive. And having said that though we've had lots of old Holdens on classic restos and I have a tremendous amount of respect for our early Holdens because they set a benchmark and they were Australia's own car. Exactly yeah and we're, we're the same we've got Holdens in our family as well yeah. and we've got a couple of FC Holdens and a, a HQ Sam Ute, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're we're not a one family one 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 make family. Uh, we just appreciate the early yeah. early cars, and uh, it's just great to get into a car like this. This car we bought from uh, from the original family that bought it new. Uh, we bought this in uh, 1991. Uh, it had about 52,000 miles on the speedo. Uh, I think all they did with it was uh, back it out of the shed and polish it and put it back in the shed because yeah. the paint and paintwork was absolutely worn out on yeah. it. So uh, we dismantled it and um, did a total repaint on it. We mm. found absolutely no rust in the car yeah. and uh, all of the interior uh, and everything is still original. Yeah. The doors have never been off it. Uh, You're just lucky. I mean, it escaped. It escaped. It, it didn't end up in a big accident. It didn't end up in a wrecking yard. It didn't rust to bits. This is what I say about all of these cars. What's left? They're, they're, it's just luck. It is. Uh, all hard work. You know, we, we plenty of people do bring back uh, cars that really should be probably in the scrap heap and all credit <laughs> to them. Uh, but it's keeping these cars on the road for us all to enjoy and that's the main thing. Glenn, one thing too that's important and uh, you touched on it earlier. I think it's so cool these days that there are so many people now that we're not that one-eyed. I mean, you'll get a Holden guy waving to a Ford guy out on the street. That didn't seem to happen years ago. It's no, like everyone accepts everyone's classic cars these days. Absolutely. The movement now is uh, is bigger than one make make, one make things. Yeah. We're all, we all like our one make cars, but uh, in the overall scheme of it, everyone appreciates everyone else's yeah. cars. Yeah. And, and it really, really is a big movement now. It's, uh, it's a huge movement. and. Uh, uh, it, it's a big business as well as a great hobby and uh, the, the people that are involved are, are, are great as well. Yeah. You know, you make so many good friendships. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Good on you, Glenn. Thanks Thank for catching up. Much. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I hope you're really enjoying this week's episode of Classic Resto as the 13th National Chrysler Rally. And, of course, it's thanks to Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil. Back with more after this. With me now, John Diamond from Penrod Oil. How are you, John? I'm excellent, Fletch. Yourself? Good, thanks, mate. It's great to see these race cars here. Uh, tell us a little bit about the legend of these. 
Well, Dad was always a great fan of British motorsport and uh, his passion was motorsport. Um, he always said he played with oil just so he could play with cars. John, the formula of developing, evolving over time, coming up with the best results for oil, on these particular cars especially, this is where a lot of the research was done. Absolutely. Dad always said, you know, we need to test our oils in, in proper racing conditions to make sure that they can live up to their standards. We make many different types of oils, we know, and our, one of our mottos is making the right oil for the right application. Our racing range is extensive. We've always recommended whatever car you've got, whatever engine you've got, ring our tech team. Happy to supply an answer for you. Okay, you know who the major sponsor is. Go to classicrestos.com.au. Click on their link to be directed to their website for more information. Thanks, John. Thanks, Fletch, and lovely shirt. Thank you. Moving through this sensational event, and what a credit it is to the Chrysler Restorers Club of Victoria. How are you, David? I'm excellent. Thanks, Fletch. That's excellent. the way, mate. Haven't they I done... Have, haven't I they? your shirt, mate. Where do I get one of those? Uh, oh, the Classic Resto shirt. Classic Resto shirt. It's a beaut, isn't it? It is a beauty. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Suits you well with, well. The, with the manly figure you have. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, it's just your day because you can go over to the Classic Resto's merch tent. Can I? People watching at home, go to classicrestos.com.au. That's what you do to get one of these shirts. Thank thanks you, thanks you for that, David. Yeah. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Thank you. Mate, love your car. This would have to go down as probably one of the most American-inspired cars. I mean, it's up there with the fair Lanes and the Statesman, the Statesman's from Cadillac, uh, the Fairlane's, you know, Galaxy based. Same deal here. We've got our our Chrysler here, the the Chrysler by Chrysler. What a beautiful car! Thank you very much, Fletch. It, uh, I love it. I've uh, restored it over the last um, three or so years. This car, the Chrysler by Chrysler, did you know that these were actually sent to the United States of America back in 1971 when the first series came out? These cars were sent over to get the opinion from the Americans as to the handling and what can be done to make them handle better. The Americans took one of these around a test track, they did two laps, put it back on the boat and sent it back and they said, that is one of the best full-size cars we've ever driven. It handled a bit better than the American Chryslers. Yeah. Look, they handle quite well. Uh, the motor I've got in this and the power it puts out, it's probably a bit too much for the, for the car. It was never designed for that sort of torque or horsepower. They're a big heavy car, but 360s in this country only came with a two-barrel carburetor, two seven rear gears, 190 kilometres an hour was their top speed when they first came out. And for a, uh, I guess, uh, an asthmatic engine in terms of breathing, it was an incredible top end. Well, it's got a uh, 28 spline Borg Warner in the rear. Yep. Uh, got a two-stage shift kit in the auto. Yep and uh, with the power puts out. It's, it's a good cruising car, Fletch. Yep, yep. It just goes nicely. The only thing is it sucks a cup, it sucks a litre, it sucks uh, 10 litres. That's, that's <laughs> it's, okay. it's thirsty. It's that's, thirsty. A, that's right. One has to fuel the beast. There's no doubt about that. Now, moving on from the mechanical side, look at the interior. These had sumptuous interiors, the high back bucket seats, the wood grain on the dash. They were... These cars, they're never going to be made again, are they? Well, we did a little bit of change on this car on the interior. Uh, we put in the high back buckets uh, in the vinyl, which was the old deer hide and all the rest of it, because it had the brocade yeah. in the front. Yeah. And the brocade might have suited some people, but it yeah. looked terrible as far as I was well, concerned. Some of the brocade was big with General Motors cars too. The uh, some of the uh, the Brahms and the HQ Statesmans they had, which followed through from uh, from Cadillac, American GM, and um, you know very classy interiors in their time. They were sumptuous, weren't they? Mm. It was like a, an armchair in the front seat, yeah, they were. It, but they did get a bit, they get a bit worn and they get a bit grotty as well. Mm -hmm. Where at least with the vinyl, you can keep it nice and clean. Absolutely. <laughs> Take care of yourself, mate. Great catching up. Thank you very much indeed, Fletcher. I appreciate you talking to me right. and I love the shirt. <laughs> he does. I think he wants one for free. Good on you, buddy. <laughs> I can nearly get a discount anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll agree that these Chryslers are magnificent vehicles. And if you'd like to see more than 3,000 of them, perhaps you may consider a Fletch tour to the United States of America in 2014 to Carlisle Events. Now, whether you're into Ford, GM or Chrysler, Carlisle Events have the biggest shows in the world. You can take in beautiful countryside over there in Carlisle. As a part of the tour, you can see private car collections, museums and of course the magnificent countryside of Pennsylvania. If you'd like to find out more about being a part of a Fletch tour to the United States of America in 2014, go to classicrestos.com.au and click on the Fletch Tours link. Time for Brett to have a go now on Classic Restos. How are you, Brett? I'm very good, thanks, Fletch. That's why I might love your drifter. Oh, thank you very much. It's beautiful. The colour just pops here in the sun. Gorgeous colour. Tell me, do bees land on it? Yeah, bees land on it, mate. Bird droppings, everything lands on it. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you had it for, Brett? Um, I got it when I was 14, and I'm 28 now, so 14 years. 
How cool is that? Oh. I mean, you're still a young guy, but you've got an appreciation for what is now a classic car from the 70s. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Dad got me into it young and yeah. stuck with it ever since. Drive line, what's going on there? Uh, it's a 265 with a four-speed manual. Uh, it's totally original. Yeah. Haven't done any modifications to it. Yeah. Uh, twin barrel carby. Purrs along like a dream. What a good old girl, eh? Oh, fantastic. Yeah. It's a great driver. And the Hemi Sixes were so good. They used to breathe so well. They used to rev really well. They they just went hard, didn't they? Oh, it absolutely. Purrs at, purrs at the line. I can pretty much get any 318 off the line. Yeah, <laughs> off the line. Um, what I love about it, too, is their styling back in the 70s as well. I mean, car manufacturers went through an interesting time back in the 70s. I mean, a lot of the power dropped off, so they had to make up for it in other areas. So they came out with these graphics, these colours, these designs, the themes, uh, Drifter, Sandman, Hang Around the Beach, all that type of stuff. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the colours, I mean, they really set themselves apart in the 70s. Um, I've had plenty of guys say, I need to get a surfboard and put it on the roof, so so that'll be the next project. And you've got to learn how to surf. Oh, yeah, that's a hard bit. <laughs> good on you, Brett. Nice catching up with you, buddy. Thank you very much. That's Thanks. good. And it's uh, a credit to you to look after a, a drifter such as this, mate. Well done. Thank you very much. We've got Callum now from Shannon's Insurance. How are you, Callum? Not too bad, Fletch. That's good, mate. I'm very impressed to think that Shannon's are so proactive in the movement. They're bringing new people into the fraternity now. How many events have you done? Uh, this is my first one. Well done. So how are you finding it? Uh, good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so tell us your thoughts so far on, uh, on this rally. Uh, it's a huge event. Uh, all the guys are great. A lot of great cars. So, yeah. That's good. So, you've, you've been busy? Definitely, yeah. yeah. That's good. It's nice to know that new people are up and coming into the movement. Uh, tell us, are you a, you're obviously a car guy yourself? I am yourself, yes. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, I've actually got a VK wagon. Yeah. Yeah, it's had a, a fair bit done to it, but yeah. Right. yeah. Hope you got it insured with the right mob? I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Callum, thanks for the chat. Nice meeting you, mate. That's all right. Thank all right. you. And, uh, I wish you well every bit with uh, with Shannon's, and there's a lot of uh, people that have had long term uh, with Shannon's uh, with employment. They go to a lot of car shows um, every week right around Australia, and uh, well, on the behalf, welcome aboard. Yeah, definitely. Right. And dream job. Can't ask for much more. Turn up to car shows all the time. There you go. Yeah. You got it. Good on you, buddy. Thank you. If you're enjoying your favourite TV show, Classic Restos, well, the DVD box sets are available at classicrestos.com.au, along with other Classic Restos merchandise as well. While you're there, check out the major sponsors. They're waiting to help you. Find out about a Fletch tour to the United States of America in 2014 and a lot more. Classicrestos.com.au. Back with more right after this. Moving through, time for Paul now. How are you, Paul? Not too bad, Fletch, not bad at all. That's the way now. Great time. That's great. Now, an R Series Valiant, 1962? Correct. Well, now, we've had an S on today's show, thought we'd throw in an R, but this comes with a unique story. Now, apparently, this car was a real basket case when you got it, full of rust, right? Correct. There's two kilometres of MIG wire in this to restore it back to normal. <laughs> it must have been in a bad way. Yeah, there's holes in the door, holes in the. But the. So, Pillar, door pillars were non-existent, half the floor was non-existent, you could put your fist through the guards, but every bit of jewellery was still on it. And the bonnet was in an awful mess, so someone had jumped on the bonnet, and the, in the bonnet's been repaired without a bit of big, without any, any uh, Mickey, wow. very little Mickey. See, it's nice that somebody's come along with some foresight. Obviously, you saw past all of that and you pictured the restored car in your mind. Yes, I did. I always wanted an R, and here's when I thought I could do something with this car. Yeah, well, good on you. Yeah, so I did, and, and uh, after three and a half years, took it for the first run, hit a kangaroo, and pushed the front of it in by three quarters of an inch. <laughs> and then I had, after that, I had a heart attack. Oh, right. <laughs> so there that's you what go. kangaroos will do to you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Now, Paul, you're a young guy back in 1962. What was it like back then when these Valiants came out? Oh, they were a dream. You looked at them and thought you'd, you nearly wet your pants looking at them, you know. And the Falcons and Holdens, uh, these were twice the car they were wow. in every respect. Wow. But not, as, not, not twice the money, but they were just a dream car. One of my dream cars. I have yeah. several dream cars. Yeah. And this is one of them. Well, good on you. Now you're at that stage of life now where you're enjoying it. So good for you, Paul. Dave, thanks, Fletch. It was great. Yeah, so I'm thoroughly totally enjoying it. Good on you. And I well enjoy done. driving it. Good on you. That's what it's all about. That's what will keep you young too, all right? That's right. Keeps yeah. me young, keeps yeah. me going. That's yeah. Good, good on you, buddy. Okay. Thanks, Fletch. Take care. Bye bye. Bye, mate. Lucky enough we've been now to have Mark Fenton, one of the organisers of this sensational 13th National Chrysler Rally. How are you, Mark? Going really well, Fletch. That's good. Happy with the day? Uh, this is 
the weather has been so fantastic after we had to train everybody in Warrnambool that yep. what the weather's like earlier in the week. Everybody got a brolly, right? Everybody got a brolly, but that today they don't really need it. <laughs> Mark, you're good enough to uh, have organised this town and country here on loan. You want to tell us a little bit about the car? Yeah, well, the car belongs to uh, Terry and Reg Black from Melbourne. It's uh, the only one in the country that's uh, up and operating at the moment, but one of our other club members does have one that he's been restoring, uh, one that's been here since uh, Rita Hayward uh, um, uh, drove it uh, when she came out here in the early uh, or late 40s, I believe it was. Uh, but this particular one, um, Terry's had it here since about 2011, and uh, it's a magnificent vehicle. It's sensational to think that they used to utilise timber in the manufacturing of automobile bodies, and they did a lot of it. But traditionally, it was in the earlier cars to be still using it in the late 40s. It was becoming rare, wasn't it? Yeah, they, beca they were very rare. These were built for the look. Mm. They, they weren't built because they needed to make them out of timber. They were built for the look. They were the glamour car uh, used in, in Hollywood. Everybody had one, especially the convertibles. They were the way to go. And uh, Chrysler the one, were the uh, car manufacturer that really excelled. Keep them away from termites and you're on your way. And for them to last this long is uh, a tremendous story to see a good one. The guy that owns this, Mark, very generous of him to um, to allow it to be here. Yep. Um, yes, uh, Terry and uh, Reg couldn't be here this weekend, but uh, they wanted it to go on, on show. And uh, they were very easy to talk into um, uh, bring it down here yeah. uh, when I asked. Uh, Re um, Terry was uh, very grateful. I taught him to drive the uh, uh, semi-automatic fluid drive and uh, he was uh, more than appreciative of uh, that and uh, offered it to uh, bring it down here and put it on display so that everybody from around Australia gets a chance to see one. Okay, have you got a website? We'd certainly have a website. Uh, our car club is uh, chryslerclubvic.org.au and uh, uh, also on Facebook, but that name's too long. <laughs> okay, good catching up, Mark. Good on you, mate. Thank you, Fred. Check that website. Keep in touch with these guys. They do a great job. Three years from now, boy, uh, another sensational event coming our way. Looking forward to it. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Fred. Thank you. What's a Chrysler show without a 1955 New Yorker? Have a look at this two-tone car. Isn't it absolutely delightful? Welcome to the show, Graham. Thank you, Fletch. Yeah, thanks for coming. That's all right. Thanks for turning up and bringing this car. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, it took two, two and a half days to come down from Narrabri. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she went good. A bit heavy on fuel, but, you know, like I say, what can you expect? Well, heavy on fuel maybe yeah. compared to uh, late model cars of today, but, I mean, when you look at their mass and, yeah, and look at the aerodynamics of these cars, I mean, they do a wonderful job, don't they? Yes, yeah, that's for sure. You know, you've got a big motor, four-barrel carby, yeah. you know, so yeah. you just got to put up with those things. Now, the first thing that really uh, jumped up and got me about this car, Graham, was its original paint and where you can, it's gone back to the undercoat there. Yes, yeah, no, it's an original car. It's been resprayed from the uh, trim down. Uh, the trim's all original. But then, of course, there's the sumptuous interior. I mean, look at that dashboard. Isn't yeah. that absolutely amazing? I reckon, yeah, it's beautiful. You know, it's, it, with that uh, gear lever sticking out of the dash, well, the next model had the push button, yeah. but I'd rather the, the, the odd shape. Yeah. <laughs> no banging out. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, not yeah. that way. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, Chrysler was always synonymous with the push button auto, and uh, to have something different with uh, with the knob hanging out, it, it, it certainly uh, just you know it, it puts a cat amongst the pigeons. And being a bit different's good. Yeah, that's that's for sure, Fletch. Yes, yeah. One famous feature is of course the Hemi engine. Here we have the 331 cubic inch Hemi, developing 250 horsepower and a whole mountain of torque. I'm sure you'll agree that that was pretty sensational for 19. And to top it all off, of course, a four-barrel carby. How are you, Dennis? Good, thanks, Fletch. That's the way, mate. Love your number plate, Pops VC. Now, what's the go there? Pops VC is um, dedication to Dad. And Dad was um, known to all the grandkids as Pop, and uh, naturally it carried on when yeah. Dad passed away about 20-odd years ago, 22 wow about 22 years ago. Isn't that nice? And I mean, the tradition of the car obviously meant a lot to him. Yes. He bought it when it was only six months old from uh, War Hope in New South Wales, yes. War Choppy. Yeah. And um, my eldest brother, who's with us today, he, he was the culprit that encouraged Dad to actually buy it. Gee, Dennis, has it been a good car over the years? It's been a good car. It's, uh, he bought it when it was only six months old. Yeah. So it's, that's how long it's been in the family, so since 1967. We've tried to um, maintain it, keep it serviced, and uh, unfortunately we've just had to rebuild, rebuild the motor, 
but we rebuilt the original block yeah, so that yeah. engine number and whatever is yeah. the same. 1966 slant six, well, you know, a rebuild in 2013. We can't knock it for that, can we? We can't <laughs> knock it for that. It's been, you know, it's been yeah. a good thing. She's running and running on about five cylinders. Yeah. Dennis, the interior is lovely too. I mean, uh, again, getting back to the one owner uh, scenario here, uh, interior is great. Uh, the two tone paint, uh, an unusual scheme, the uh, burgundy against the white separated with the stainless steel trim. Um, it certainly takes us back when we, we look at that paint code. It does. I believe they tell us that it was a dealer's option. It was done by the first owner of the vehicle in Warhope, uh, who also put the, the black vinyl roof. And the original vinyl roof was a very smooth vinyl. Yeah. So very unusual. But yeah. Then we had to replace it, of course, over the years. Yeah. And we've gone for the lemon, uh, lemon peel, whatever they call it. Uh, in the uh, the last little bit of um, restoration work that was done on it. Dennis, thank you so much for coming along earlier today, getting me in a headlock and saying, hey, Fletch, come and film Pops VC. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Fletch, for the opportunity. Uh, yes, we've had a, a great time with the, the motor vehicle. We have it insured through Shannon's, and with the new engine rebuild, we're running on Penrite. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, eh? That just happened to be two major sponsors of Classic Restos. Thank you very much. For more information, see them, classicrestos.com.au. Good on you, Dennis. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Fletch. Good on you, mate. Well, there you go. I hope you've enjoyed just some of the 13th National Chrysler Rally, put together by the fantastic people of the Chrysler Restorers Club of Australia, Victoria. Now, classicrestos.com.au is the website that you need for the DVD box sets of the show, along with other Classic Restos merchandise. You may be contemplating a Fletch tour to the US in 2014 and to find out how my major sponsors can help you as well. It's all there at classicrestos.com.au Now as I say at the end of every show until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from please ride and drive safe I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like Classic Restos on Facebook facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and episodes can be seen at shannons.com.au Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, National Parts Depot and Penrite Oil.